So this is the spot we've been at for the past two nights. The uh, weather's just been really bad, so I'm trying to wait for it to get nice out. It's supposed to be getting good tomorrow and the next week. I'm putting off going to Zion. You can see Zion off in the distance over there. But um, I kind of want to board your car so I can do some really cool hikes in Zion. The only other thing I want to get done in Utah is to conquer Sand Hollow a little bit more. I'm really upset with the day that I had the other day, kind of chickened out on everything. But I really want to get into the East Rim Trail and check out the Flintstone House. So yeah, I think we're going to try to camp in Sand Hollow tonight. We're going to go to Petco, get some food for Dracarys, and I'm going to get some food for myself. And uh, just a quick resupply run in town and then probably try to get to Sand Hollow. So uh, yeah. Let's do it. All right, guys, this is going to be a long one. I'm just going to be straight up with you. But if you made it this far, you're probably pretty interested. I worked really hard on this one. So if you want to see what a stock Rubicon is capable of tackling in Sand Hollow, then stick around to the end and I promise you won't be disappointed. This spot we just camped at is off a of Sheep Bridge Road. Great for newbie overlanders like me. There's a whole bunch of spots with great views. Uh, you just have to make sure you find the designated spot, though. And you're right by Zion. You're right by St. George. There's so much to do around this area. So I highly suggest Sheep Bridge Road for anyone looking to camp out here in Utah. All right, so we're back for another go at Sand Hollow. We're coming in from the back this time by the Warner Valley Dinosaur Tracks. Chikaris is back here. I feel bad. He just got a little mud in his face because it's a little muddy and I'm trying to get through here. There's like eight miles of a dirt road before the dinosaur tracks. But after that, I think it's going to be all rocks and sand. And um, we're going to try to go on the East Rim Trail and get to the Flintstone House. So stay tuned. <laughs> This is a tough decision. My tires are like caked in mud. I'm sliding all over the place. It looks like it gets a little hard again right around the corner. God, I really don't want to get stuck. I really don't want to have to call Matt's off road recovery. I'm so close to the tracks and I just don't know how these tires are going to do now if I get to sand. So I'm a little freaked out, but uh, let's just do it. Yeah, this sucks. There's no tread visible. My tire is just completely covered in this clay mud. Let's go ahead and air it down to like 20 PSI. So this is a little easier. And when we get to the sand part, we don't have to worry about it. All right, let's hope this trip doesn't end with me getting rescued by the people that inspired me to come out here. Right, that little bit of road got all the mud off the tires so we're looking good we're gonna hike over the dinosaur tracks and give Jakaris a chance to get out and uh, then we're gonna go down this road here and uh, I guess over those rocks over there so should be a good time <laughs> Oh wow, they're like all over here. There's a bunch right by me and then just a little bit ahead is a bunch more. And there's a whole bunch over there, oh wow. But yeah, I already passed them, that means I saw one. Pretty sure that's one right there. Wild. Let's go find more. This really is dinosaur territory. Can't wait to get to the Flintstone house. But I don't see any tracks. They are here though, somewhere. This is really cool, even if I can't find the tracks, really cool spot. They literally have to be here, like all around me, and I just can't pick them out. Maybe that's one right there. Possibly. Wow, it's like sparkly. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera. Maybe that's a track right there. These might all be little footprints, I'm not sure. But it's hard to say what's an actual track and what's just, you know, erosion out of the rock. Regardless, it's crazy to be walking where dinosaurs walked. I trust the experts. All right, so we made it to the dinosaur tracks. That was phase one of today's journey. And now we're going on to phase two. So, uh, just taking these nice views. And uh, let's head on over that mountain in the Jeep. I 
think I have any business on this trail. I think it's actually a uh, mountain bike or ATV trail. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna slide off this mountain if I try to go any further. Yeah, we just saw some dirt bikes go up there and uh, I'm not doing that. I can't believe it said this was an actual road. big fail I guess there's a reason the trail is in green on onyx and it's not a featured blue trail I guess there's the right way to do the East Rim Trail is further down this road or you can come in from like a main highway it's getting late I don't even know if I have enough time but I might as well go check it out from this way I really want to get to the Flintstone house before I leave this area <laughs> I still think I might have been able to get up that trail, but it was just really narrow and steep and I didn't want to risk it. So if anyone's brought a full-size rig from the Warner Valley Dinosaur Track straight up to the East Rim Trail, please let me know because I'd love to know if my instincts were correct. But everything happens for a reason and now we get to explore the outer edges of Sand Mountain a little bit more. It's really crazy being out here. If you couldn't already tell, I'm a little bit of a Matt's Off-Road Recovery fan. And just a couple years ago, I was sitting at home watching his videos, wondering how cool it would be to actually go try some of these trails on my own. And now here I am in my own Jeep, freaking myself out, genuinely wondering if I'm gonna have to call them myself. Just a reminder that you really can do anything you set your mind to. Don't give up on your dreams, guys. Now, could I have gotten an XJ like Matt has and put $10,000 worth of mods on it and be tackling even harder trails out here? Sure. Would I have saved money overall? Yeah, definitely. But that's just not who I am. I convinced myself I needed a JL Rubicon. I wanted a modern car with all the creature comforts, and I spent all my money on my camping setup and overlanding gear. And uh, I'm not mad about it. This is getting a little bit hairy, guys. Uh, wow. The next phase of my build will be the suspension and tires. And then maybe next time we're here, we'll be able to tackle some of the real trails. But for now, I'm happy with this. So this trail is called the Chola Challenge, and I'm pretty sure this is the main obstacle right here. Now, it doesn't really look that bad. Even watching the video, it looks pretty simple. But as you can see, it's pretty much a 45 degree incline, and the loose rocks you're driving on do not make it seem any safer at all. And just before the top, there's a two foot rock ledge that you have to crawl over. And just looking at it, I was convinced that I was gonna flip the Jeep if I tried to do it. So I was pretty scared to do this, to be honest. I have all this weight up top, I have all this weight in the back, I still don't understand the physics of how my Jeep did not do a complete backflip, but we made it, and it looks really easy on video, so don't judge me for the way I act when I finally get to safe ground. And here we are coming up to that ledge, and we're over it. Very simple. I don't know why I built this up so much in my head, but I can't stress enough how terrified I was to do this, so it's good to know how easy this actually was, and uh, I definitely gained a lot of confidence doing this obstacle. All right, that was insane. I've never been more scared in my life, but um, wow, what a nice viewpoint up here. We only got like an hour of sunlight left. We gotta get going. There's an American flag up here. I gotta assume that means I've made it through the hard part. We're gonna walk to Karas real quick, and um, God, I hope there's nothing crazier on the way out. That, I literally was sure I was dead right there, but I just had to do it. There was nowhere to turn around. Like, I committed, I went for it, so, woo! There's the Americano flag, there's the Jeep, there's the view. We're way behind schedule. I don't know why I chose that trail to go through, but uh, the difficulty wouldn't load, so I couldn't actually even check like where I was headed into but it seemed easy i was like oh it's probably just like it has been you know no that was some serious rock crawlage craziest rock crawlage i've done that was probably crazier than the soldier's pass trail
Just a reminder to leave all gates the way you found them. I always show myself opening gates and you don't see me close them, but don't worry guys, I am closing them behind me. I didn't even know about this when I got out here, but if you do come across a closed gate, you can open it, just make sure you leave it the way you found it. Unless it says do not enter a private property, anything like that, obviously you don't want to go through those gates, but any normal gates without any writing, go right on through. made it thank god i actually was really worried for a second um especially to make it back before dark but we we got it so i'm gonna air up probably let your cars out for a minute and then i think i deserve dominoes tonight Isn't it glorious? Domino's is my go-to uh, cheat meal or my reward meal. And even though I'm from Long Island, New York, where we have really good pizza, I consider this like a dessert pizza. I get the handmade pan with Alfredo sauce, Philly steak, and bacon. This looks like one of the better ones that I've had on this trip, so I think I've earned it. I'm really excited. Dracarys is ready. It's also his favorite food, so let's dive in. Probably the last night that uh, we're going to camp at Sand Hollow. We're going to go for the third and hopefully final, it's technically the fourth attempt at getting to the Flintstone house, but the third real attempt with an actual plan. And uh, it should go pretty smoothly if uh, all my research is correct and my suggestions from the Facebook group are correct. So we're going to pack up and get out of here and uh, hopefully we should have like three hours if I get there by 2.30. Uh, I think it's like 1.30 right now, so hopefully we get there and we can just bang it out and it'll be nice and fun. Really shouldn't be anything crazy like yesterday. It should just be all uh, fun times and good footage, so let's do it. We made it here it's like three o'clock so we have two and a half hours of sunlight ideally we're gonna try and get to the Flintstone house by four so we know we have enough time to get back and uh, get to tonight's camp spot before it gets too dark so I'm gonna go straight down to like 18 17 psi just so it's a nice smooth ride on the sand and the rocks and uh, let's do it So this is the East Rim Trail, and this is my recommendation to anyone with a stock Rubicon or equally capable stock rig looking to build some confidence off-road like I was. There's so many options for trails out here, it gets really overwhelming. But if you only have one day in Sand Hollow and you want a good mix of riding on dunes, rock crawling, and scenery, then this is definitely the way to go. I had the most fun on this trail, and it'll take you to the center of Sand Hollow, and you can come back out the way you came, or you can go straight through to Top of the World and go out the way I came in the other day on Water Tank Road, as long as you can make it up the dunes.
I think this is where I had to cross into Razzle Dazzle for a bit to get to the Flintstone house. And as you can see, things are getting pretty crazy. It's pretty hard to see where the trail is, especially when every way forward is a giant rock formation or a big pile of rocks. Well, we got switched up again, and uh, we only have 15 minutes left to get to the Flintstone house. We have some serious rock crawling to do, so uh, let's get to it. All right, if this doesn't reconnect with Razzle Dazzle, I'm gonna freak out. It did not reconnect with Razzle Dazzle, and we had to turn around. Be careful when you're driving out here in the desert, guys. Desert soil is actually alive. It contains cyanobacteria, mosses, fungi, and other types of bacteria. Driving on it can really damage it for a long period of time. So make sure you stay on designated trails to avoid damaging the ecosystem. So this was the actual trail and I guess the GoPro died and I didn't realize, but this was probably the single hardest rock crawl I did on the entire trip. I'm so mad I didn't get it on film. I really wish I had some overlanding friends to spot me on these obstacles and get the good camera angles because the POV angle wouldn't even do it justice. I seriously could have flipped the Jeep here if I wasn't careful. But now let's teleport to the top. All right, this has been insane. We're gonna try to go past the Flintstone house and get out the way that we tried to come in the first time we attempted this because I'm not going back down that in reverse. This better be the last obstacle I have because I can't handle this anymore. And we're at like 4.15 already, so uh, yeah, we're screwed. All right, we made it. That's the actual Flintstone house over there. We're gonna go get a closer look, but all these like formations just look pretty sick. And look at that, wow, this is good to see. Oh my God. I know it probably seems stupid, but I just really wanted to get here for some reason. Flintstones are awesome. This whole place is like a prehistoric playground, off-roading paradise. This is cool. <laughs> But look at all these rocks, these are all crazy. Look at this view, oh my God. We're definitely about to get a couple of drone vids real quick. Um, maybe climb to the top of one of these bad boys. But yeah, here it is, the Flintstone house, guys. It was a lot of work to get here. Three full days and four kind of attempts of getting here. And I almost chickened out again. I actually turned the GoPro off for a second or the battery died right before I did like probably the craziest obstacle of the uh, excursion, of course. So I missed out on that, but there's plenty of crazy stuff you guys just saw. I mean, 
that was gnarly. That was officially the craziest thing I've done so far. And still only on the 33 inch tire, stock Rubicon, East Rim Trail, Sand Hollow, Razzle Dazzle. Now we're gonna try to hook up with the West Rim Trail for wimps um, and get on out of here. We came from all the way down there, I think. We went over up over that ridge over there, went around here to get to these. Oh, more little caverns, more little hideouts. Wow, and so green too, like green desert. View from the inside of the house. Great place to live. A little small though. Yeah, so pretty rewarding uh, getting here finally. I can see the top of the world where we were at the other day, right over there. So um, we're just gonna head up that way, loop around, and it should be easy. I don't know, I have a lot more confidence going uphill now. The Jeep is actually pretty powerful. Sand's pretty wet, should get a nice good grip on it. And if I have to go up that steep incline, then it is what it is. So let's do it. If you watched my last video, you know that I originally tried to get to the Flintstone house from top of the world, but I saw how steep the dunes were and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get back up. I'm sure a normal Jeep without a thousand pounds of gear in the back would fly up the dunes, but listen how much my engine struggled here. I guess I was right to worry. About to get some epic jeep picks um you guys probably saw the mooers over there coming in the cows pretty crazy i've seen a few out here but yeah in conclusion the hill that i was too scared to go down the first day that i tried to get to the flintstone house because i didn't know if i'd be able to get back up i got back up it so yeah the jeep is amazing i mean i i don't know i was not feeling confident through it but we got up here, so, wow. Let's get the hell out of here.
glad I saved the best for last. If you're a Matt's Off-Road Recovery fan, you probably recognize some of these songs. I chose my favorite ones from his videos to use as a tribute because as I mentioned earlier, his videos are a huge inspiration for my channel and I've learned so much about off-roading and how not to get stuck out here by watching his videos. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. And if you're still watching, I don't even know what to say. This is probably one of the longest videos that I'll make until I get some more traction, but I worked really hard on this one. I was thinking about breaking it up into two parts, but I just wanted to put it all out there because I already had the first part about Sand Hollow. And yeah, I would love to know what you guys think. I mean, not a lot of people watch to the end of my videos. So if you're one of the rare few who watches, let me know what you liked about this video. Let me know what you didn't like. I'm really still trying to figure out what I should do more of, what I should do less of. So definitely let me know. And you know what to do if you want to support me. So enjoy the rest of this outro and stay tuned to the end for a little teaser of the next adventure. And the next one is going to be a good one. All right, we made it. And there wasn't a single time I felt safe enough to eat my Buffalo Chicken Ranch burrito from Mavericks. So uh, we're going to have to have it now after I air up. So let's get aired up, get to the campsite, give Jakaris a 12th time to take a poop. He's crying and I keep giving him opportunities. He just, he doesn't want to listen. There's also this 80 mile off-road road that goes to the edge of the Grand Canyon where we can camp. And that's going to be a journey because I think the most distance I've gone off-road is like 50 miles and going 80 in and with no service and 80 back is going to be really, uh, it's going to be a test for me. So should be worth the view, but. Gotta get moving. So much love. 